Welcome Coral Reef Aquarium School Basic. Today is yet another upgrade episode and it's the third of its kind and we will be talking about the automatic feeder and the benefits of that. Before starting I would like to remind the purpose of the upgrade session. The upgrade sessions are technology or things that will benefit you in your hobby but they are non-essential to achieve the results we are seeing. They will help you, they, I think they are well worth the money spent but they are non-essential and if you want to get started on a lower budget you can exclude this one and get a little bit more labor intense um, operation of the tank. Now, starting with benefits and the risks of the automatic feeder. The obvious benefit is with an automatic feeder you are able to travel knowing that your feed and your, uh, your fish and your uh, tank is fed and fed controllably. Sometimes if you have people not knowing about your fish tank, you, they can tend to if they care for it while you're off, they can overfeed it. This is a way to control the feed. Secondly, you get stable feeding every day, every week. It also comes with some obvious risks. And one of them is the risk that the feeder gets stuck and you overfeed your tank. And you get a spike in nutrients and that can ultimately kill your fish and your corals. You would like to avoid that. Secondly, you can get a feeder malfunction and uh, that it stops feeding, so you can starve your tank. Thirdly, the pellets, pellets, typically you feed dry food, they attach to the surface and they get immediately skimmed off the surface, so they do not benefit the fish, they only add to the nutrient level in the tank. And fourthly, uh, moisture can go up into the feeder and uh, you can eventually jam the feeder um, as the pellets are soaked with moisture. Now, how do you mitigate the risks? Because the benefits are clear, now how do we mitigate the risks? First, the first risk that the feeder is stuck and that you overfeed, most easily uh, mitigated is that you look for a clockwork design on the feeder uh, not a timer, not a clock in a timer. But, and what I mean about that is a timer typically triggers a step motor that is adding one portion or spins one revolution. But if the timer jams or the step motor jams, it can continue feeding until uh, there is no more pellets in the canister. And that is typically a recipe for disaster. So a clockwork instead, it only rotates one revolution per day. And then you have a fixed amount of uh, portions being distributed. You see one example to the right. And this is as close to fail safe as you can get. About the feeder malfunctioning and stopped feeding, I think most easily this is mitigated by having the feeder running continuously, not just while you're off, because that maximizes the opportunity that this malfunction happens while you're actually home and the tank only goes one or two days without uh, feeding. And you will see on your fish that they change in behavior if they are kept hungry for a few days. I also recommend here that you replace the battery one to two weeks before you travel because if you do it the night before it is uh, quite stressful and you might actually do something wrong and the feeder doesn't work while you're off. So one to two weeks will maximize the opportunity for uh, the feeder to work while you're off. And thirdly, yeah, wipe the feeder uh, continuously or every 10-12 weeks so that you minimize the risk for a long-term uh, fouling in the feeder that it clocks up 
and uh, would stop your feeding while you're off. Now, the problem with the pellets attaching to the surface and that they're skimmed off in the surface skimmer, I think you most easily solve it by having a feeding cup uh, below the outlet of the feeder, similar to the lower picture to the right. This is a DIY solution, but you can buy this as a feeder cup uh, in uh, most aquarium shops or online, something similar. And uh, then the pellets that are touched to the surface, they will eventually soak up water or the fish will go there and pick it out. And uh, then uh, your pellets will reach the fish or the invertebrates in the tank and not your filtration system. Finally, the moisture that jams the feeder, I think most easily it's uh, solved with the feeder running without a lid or a perforated lid so that the moisture that goes up in the feeder channel continues um, past the feeder and doesn't get stuck. So you see an example to the top right where we remove the lid on the feeder to avoid that. It's very simple, very robust. And um, yeah. That said, about the feeder, I will also show you a picture about the installation in the project tank as it's running. And um, I would like to thank you for your attention. I wish you a pleasant evening. See you in the next episode. Bye bye.